Indonesia is a country that places a huge amount of emphasis in the concept of national unity, commonly referred to as NKRI, which means that no part of Indonesia should break a part of its territorial boundaries. Given that the country is comprised of dozens of ethnicities and hundreds of languages, it is a concept that has kept Indonesia largely intact for 72 years. But East Timor, one of the world's newest countries, did break away from Indonesia and became independent in 1999. The former 27th province of Indonesia became independent after 24 years through a referendum monitored and organized by the United Nations. Saya ingin mengajak masyarakat di Timur Timur dan seluruh rakyat Indonesia untuk menerima kenyataan ini dengan ikhlas, sabar, dan hati yang lapang. So how did East Timor gain their independence? Unlike most other places in Indonesia colonized by the Dutch, East Timor was under Portuguese occupation for hundreds of years. Consequently, East Timor was not part of the original Indonesian territories that declared independence in 1945. East Timor only became a part of Indonesia in 1974, after the Carnation Revolution in Portugal overthrew the existing government and created a power vacuum in East Timor. The Indonesian army quickly launched Operation Saroja, occupying East Timor to supposedly protect it from communism. This started a 24-year armed conflict that led to the deaths of 150,000 people, which is about 20% of East Timor's population. On the political front, the Indonesian government also pitted local political factions against each other, encouraging and rewarding those who are supportive of integration of East Timor to Indonesia. These parties are the APODET, Timorese Popular Democratic Association, and the UDT, Timorese Democratic Union. While the Fretilin, or Revolutionary Front for an Independent East Timor, battled and protested against the Indonesian authorities. One pivotal moment for the East Timor spike was the Santa Cruz Massacre, where the Indonesian armed forces opened fire on hundreds of unarmed protesters at a cemetery, killing over 250 people. The massacre was witnessed, recorded, and reported by numerous members of the Foreign Press Corps, and the army was even complicit in beating some international journalists, such as Democracy Now! founder Amy Goodman. Since the massacre was caught on tape, the East Timor's independence movement gained some international attention. Many criticized and even supported East Timor's independence through founding of ITAN, East Timor Action Network. This network drew a lot of attention on human rights violations in East Timor done by the Indonesian armed forces. But it was not until the fall of Suharto regime in 1998 that made independence possible. Coming from the violent May 1998 riots and with a new civilian president, military occupation became untenable. President B.J. Habibie called for a referendum to decide the East Timor question. And, in a 78% landslide, East Timor, or now known as Timor Leste, became a new country. Yet, since becoming an independent, East Timor has had its own share of growing pains. Half of the country's 1.2 million people still live in poverty, and many worry that East Timor's government is being overly reliant on foreign oil and gas contracts, which is unsustainable. On the political front, it was not all smooth sailing. On February 2008, an opposition party member, Major Alfredo Fernando, stormed then-President Ramos Porta's home and attempted to assassinate him. To solve this turbulence, East Timor runs itself on a consensus political model, which means that the country has no opposition faction. Many also see elites being the primary beneficiary of this independence and this model. And current President Taul Matanuak even says this, The state of Timor-Leste is far too centralized. It centralizes skill, power, and privileges. It excessively wastes resources, allowing thousands of Timorese to become second-class citizens. OPM, or the Free Papua Union, wants to follow Timor Leste's suit. So will Indonesia's concept of NKRI, or national unity, hold up? Or will Indonesia see other parts of its country break apart? Give us your opinion.